Hi, John here again for another episode of Clear the Kalax, where once again I'm looking for your help to clear my Kalax because I've got games coming in, games gotta go. That's the way it is. I'm not like these guys where I just keep sticking games in every corner of the house. They mostly have to fit on my Kalax. This isn't all my games, this is a good chunk of them. This is more of the better games. Some of the other games are easier to make decisions on. These ones I need help on, so let me know what you think in the comments, please, if there's a game that I need to keep that I'm saying I'm getting rid of, and vice versa. But We've done the first couple of shelves on this one on Kalax B. Now we're going to do the last two on my second Kalax. Kalax B, coming up. All right, here we have Kalax B3. Kalax B, shelf number three. We'll just go from left to right here and see what we think. Starting on the left, we've got Tiny Towns, which is a really cool, I'd say it's a very, uh, it's like an imitation of a roll and write. And we're using blocks and stuff. It makes it more enjoyable than a roll and write, in my opinion. Uh, it really hurts my brain to play it, but it is a fun game to play. Next to that is Coal Baron, which is one that I got years and years ago on a really good deal. And I like it. It's a worker placement game where you literally have workers. I like it when your workers are literally workers. And these are coal mine workers working an eight-hour shift. So you work 24 hours. You have three shifts that you work. Digging coal, digging mines, and uh, fulfilling contracts. And it plays fairly quickly for, for a euro of that type. And I like it. Just tell me what you think on that one. It's cold. It's like dark and dingy looking like a cold game should look. So I, I like the graphics in it too. Rocket Man is one I've mentioned in the show before. Or Rocket Man rather. And it's a Martin Wallace game and it's a deck builder push your luck. Really sounds thematic and I just have not gotten that to the table yet. So let me know what you think of Rocket Man if you played that one before. This is the one that comes with the metal coins and the little spaceship and all that stuff. So it's got like the upgrades from the Kickstarter. So tell me what you think of Rocket Man. Next to that is Brian Baru, which is like a groundbreaking game, in my opinion, where you're using trick-taking to also facilitate some uh, area control and and other things. Some, it's a trick-taking game where you can slough off if you want to, and you, a lot of the times you don't want to win the trick. You're trying to get what you get when you lose, because when you lose, you also get something. So Brian Baru, really cool game. Not, not thinking of getting rid of that. Watch is one that I've just recently gotten, and... It's hard to explain what this game's like because I haven't played it, number one. But it's a huge point salad game. It just seems like points are going to be coming in no matter what you do. So you kind of pick a path and go with it. And it's it's kind of an odd theme where you're like, uh, I think it's post-war working in Russia at a watch factory. But you're also like uh, trying to s like sneak munitions out and stuff like that. But if someone's watching you, you have to bribe them. So it's kind of cool. You're trying to like catch other people doing shenanigans while you're doing shenanigans yourself is the theme, but I don't know if the theme really comes through because I haven't played it, so let me know what you think of that. Peak Oil, another one I haven't played, another one on the shelf of shame, which looks really cool, and I've I purchased another game just to get upgraded components for Peak Oil, so I'd have really cool looking guys that actually look like agents, because that's what they are in Peak Oil. So I got some really cool agent meeples for Peak Oil, but if you've played that, let me know. Do I need to keep that? Is that something I just need to cut my losses on and leave, or get it, get it out of the collection? Next to that is Council of Four, which has gotten played multiple times, and it's a remake of an older version of Council of Four, which looks, the older one is very old-time Euro-y with big, just chunky wooden people, and this one has like a, a hundred little detailed figures, and it's a really fun game. I really like Council of Four. It's, uh, the counselors all look like counselors now, and you have to either have influence or bribe the council in order to build uh, shops in different areas on the board. It's uh, it's really cool, and it doesn't, doesn't take too long to play, and really fun, uh, crunchy Euro game. Next to that, though, is New York 1901. I've had that game, I want to say, five and a half years now, and it hasn't gotten played much lately, uh, so that's a shame. And I've got a cool little Gangsters of New York mini expansion that I've thrown in there and still haven't played with. Probably one I just need to break out, go over the rules again, and maybe just force it to the table sometime, because it's, it's a game that anybody can play. It's very... It's very, uh, what would you call it? very entry level, very easy to get into game, very easy to teach, and it's beautiful. looks really good. But let me know what you think of that one. Survive. Uh, Escape. Now it's called Escape from Atlantis. I owned the original of this back in the 80s when it was just Survive, and it wasn't nearly the game it is now. I mean, the components were garbage. It was all just cardboard, and now you've got this cool uh, multi-layered uh, tiles that you use to make the the island there's an island in the middle that's sinking and you're trying to get off of it and get to the get to the edges and you can go anywhere that you can get get your guys to be safe um, if you played survive the way i like to play it is i like to play where nobody knows what the value of the people are like you don't even know what 
the value your people are because I I played it too many times where I had my top three just eaten right away, and I'm like, well, there's no point in playing anymore. I, my six, five, and four are gone. I, I'm gonna lose. So it's nice knowing not knowing what your guys are worth until the end of the game. To me, uh, voices in my head. This is a strange little game because it combines. Uh, it's got a, a story to it. It's like a story game. It's a courtroom drama story game where you're playing the voices inside the head of the defendant or you're playing the judge trying to convict him. And every voice inside his head has a different goal. So everybody has different goals. So multiple people can win. Uh, the judge can win and some of the voices can win. Maybe just one of the voices. It's, it's, and it's, <laughs> it's got a, a uh, flick'em aspect to it. So it's, it's also a dexterity game. So very odd game that I've only played a couple times. I've never played it with all of the del- all of the advanced rules, so maybe that's what I need to try sometime, and that would probably really make it come alive. But tell me what you think of Voices in My Head. Foodies is one that is it's just it's such a fun, quick, easy game that it's it's hard to say you should get rid of it. But you're building a food court, and you have different types of restaurants in the food court, and they all interact differently with each other. And uh, you roll dice to activate different ones, and you can manipulate the dice and whatnot. Quick, easy, fun game. So Foodies is kind of fun. It's probably staying. Then we've got Carnival of Monsters. Carnival of Monsters was one of my favorite games from a few years back until I bought um, It's a Wonderful World. And they both, unfortunately, kind of play pretty similarly. So you're not going to be bringing them out together. And and It's a Wonderful World was my most played game a couple years ago. So maybe it's time to go back to Carnival of Monsters and give it a shot. I don't know if there's an expansion out for it, but if there is, I'd be interested to kind of you know, rejuvenate that game. Keep it, uh, what did I say before? Keep it on dialysis a little while longer. But an amazing looking game. It's There's nothing wrong with the gameplay. I really like it, but it's just, it kind of got uh, left on the left behind there for a while. And then over here on the right is Holding On, The Troubled Life of Billy Kerr, who, uh, it's a co-op game with a huge story to it that looked interesting to me, so I got it, and I've never played it, so it's probably on its way out. But let me know if you played Holding On, because I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, now we have shelf B4, which is our last shelf in this series. So we'll finish it up here with the bottom of this shelf. Starting on the left-hand side there, we've got CV, which is a game that I loved Civilizations right next to it so much that I bought CV, and it's hardly gotten played. So that might be a candidate right there. Next to it, once again, is Civilizations or CV-lizations, however you want to call it. Fun little goofy game that used to get played a lot, and it's, it was a lot of fun. And I don't know if you've ever played it before, but yeah, you can't take it seriously. It's just a fun little uh, card-driven game with a little bit of uh, resources, and you're trying to build up your civilization. You get different things in it, and and uh, it's just funny. that it's The artwork, the stuff in it, it's, it makes the whole game. So uh, if that's, let me know what you think about either one of those two. Those could be candidates. Then we've got the Marvel United. I've got X-Men and the base game. Not going anywhere because my youngest, I think, still wants to play those. And so we're going we're gonna to get those played. So that's probably not going anywhere. Summer Camp is a cool little game that I got from Target when it was real cheap. And my wife loves it. And it's a deck builder race game that you're racing across the camp and trying to collect badges and stuff. It's really cool. The components in it are awesome. Fun little game there. And you've got... Different ways you can play it each time because you can go for different badges each time. So really cool. Fantastic Factories. I think I'm keeping that because I really like what it does. And I've got the mat for it and everything. And I just need to break it out more often and maybe get one of the expansions for it. Although one of them, I think, is just really take that-ish. And I don't think you really need that in this game. I think it's fun just kind of working on your own board. But Fantastic Factories, great game. Dream Home, another great game right next to it. I've got the expansion so you can play more players with it. And uh, it also gives you other ways to play without, in, in the current, I don't know if you're familiar with Dream Home, but usually everybody's trying to build their house basically the same way. But with the expansion, you've got your own plans you can try to fulfill. And so if you don't do everything exactly right in your home, it doesn't matter. You can still get points other ways. So that's kind of cool. Then next to it, we've got Winter Queen, which is still in shrink that I just got real cheap at a Black Friday sale uh, at the end of the year. So let me know what you think about Winter Queen. I've never played it. Uh, Pan Am, awesome game. An amazing uh, worker placement game that has really cool components in it. Really awesome, strong theme-wise. Not going anywhere, in my opinion. Spoils of War is one I've not played in a long time. And it's it's a little bit like Liar's Dice is what I'm told, though I've never played Liar's Dice, where you're bidding uh, 
compare uh, against the dice that you have secretly hidden behind your screen that nobody knows what you have. So you could be bluffing or what have you and trying to get these spoils of war. A fun game, but it hasn't gotten played in a while. So that could be a candidate. Mega Land, definitely a candidate. It's okay, but I haven't played it in so long. Uh, it's a little bit of Maki Koro mixed with some uh, Push Your Luck uh, is the way I would describe it. Not a bad game, though. And then there's Raise Your Goblets, which is a really fun, just barely, I like to say this about some games, just barely this side of a party game where you're, if you, if the, uh, I want to say the scene in, what is that movie? Um, Princess Bride, that's it, where they're trying to figure out who has the poison in their goblet. That's basically this whole game is that scene where you've got goblets in the middle of the table, you're putting wine in them, you're putting poison in them, you're putting antidotes in them. And so then you, everybody ends up drinking the goblet in front of them at the end. And if you have more poison than antidotes, you die. If you have more wine, then you get more points. Plays pretty quick. It's a fun game. It's actually one I might need to get out this weekend. So that is it for Shelf B4. And that brings us and that brings us to the end of Clear My Kalax. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of this episode and the end of the series of Clear, Clear the Kalax. So I need your help, please. Don't forget to talk or mention something in the comments below. Let me know your opinions on these games. What should stay? What should go? I really need to know. And so until next time, we'll see you around the board.